Hello, my name is Christian Hacking and I'm reporting for CBR UK and we're going to be bringing you the main abortion headlines over the next few minutes, so do stay tuned. Now this week, um, there were a number of developments you need to know about. Firstly, the Christian Legal Centre has launched a judicial review into the government's decision to bring in DIY home abortions. Now, this is fantastic because these um, radical and deadly abortion measures were brought in without any legal scrutiny, any debate or vote inside the House, and allow women effectively to take the lives of their children in their own home, turning their bedrooms and their ensuite toilet into abortion facilities. These measures also fly in the face of the 18... 18- 61 Defences Against the Person Act, which prohibits the taking of poisons to kill children. It also runs in the face of the 1967 Abortion Act, which specifies that abortions have to be conducted in a clinic. And thirdly, it flies in the face of what um, Kenneth Clark said in 1990, right to Anne Widdicombe. Anne Widdicombe um, asked him whether um, the changes to abortion legislation that happened in 1990 would lead to DIY home abortions. He said emphatically that that was not the case. And yet, that is exactly what we're seeing. This judicial review is backed by a doctor and clinical lecturer from the University of Birmingham and the faithful Anne Widdicombe herself, wanting to see through the promise that Kenneth Clark uh, made all those years ago. You can read the whole thing on the Christian Concern website. But this is exactly the kind of aggressive, front-footed response we need to the measures being brought in at this time of crisis. And they are especially necessary because this very week, Wales and Scotland have also decided to bring in DIY home abortions. They're being told that such measures are in the best interests of women, that they will um, help to keep people at home and to save lives. Well, guess what? They're going to do the exact opposite. These measures take the life of an unborn child and with high complication rates, 10% with infection, 5% with incomplete abortion, we can expect an influx of bleeding, potentially septic women coming into A&E surgeries um, and needing um, emergency GP um, attention in order to get antibiotics and other um, treatment in order to clear up um, what is being sold as a safe and uncomplicated procedure. But finally, and most importantly, um, I need to tell you that this Monday will mark 52 years since legalised abortion in the United Kingdom. In that time, there have been an astonishing 9 million lives lost. Let's pause on that figure just a moment. 9 million. That is the same as the entire population of London lost to abortion. Who knows how many doctors, politicians, sports stars, um, artists, dancers, musicians, even the very person who was going to cure cancer may well have been wiped out in that time by women in a place of fear and despair egged on by abortion providers that gain monetarily through every abortion um, decision. But it's not just them. Their blood is on all of our hands because this has happened on our watch. So whatever you do this Monday, make sure you remember those 9 million lives lost. And do search the web to see what other initiatives you can take to commemorate the lives lost by abortion in this nation. I've been Christian Hacking. This has been CBR UK's weekly news abortion update. Do tune in next week at 5pm to get the latest headlines from Abortion Perspective. Thank you.